Welcome to Revelation for a Revolution, where we bring the revelation from God's Word to cause a revolution in your life. Today, I want to talk to us on what I've titled, The Blessing on a Man Overrides the Curse on the Land. The Blessing on the Man Overrides the Curse on the Land. And we'll be taking our reading from the book of Genesis, chapter number 26, verse 12. Chapter number 26, verse 12, and it says, Then Isaac sowed in that land, and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Then Isaac sowed in that land, and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for an opportunity to bring your word to the people and the privilege. I ask, O oh God, that the light of your word will enter now and bring light to your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, anyone who is struggling in darkness over the issues that you want to touch today, Lord, let their deliverance come speedily. And let the testimony be to the glory of your mighty name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Listen, we are in a season where things have become too tough. Businesses are crashing. Economies are crashing. It looks as if nothing is working anywhere and people are running helter skelter looking for what to do. Listen, pastors are running from Nigeria to the US. They are running from the US back to Nigeria. Businessmen are closing their businesses down south and running to the west. Others are closing from west and they are running to the north. Everybody is acting as if the real problem is the land. Yes, indeed. A large extent, some lands are cursed. We can't deny that. There are places that things are difficult because the land itself is cursed. It's tight. God cursed the land for man's sake in the beginning. Amen. So it's it's not as if, yes, there are no reasons to run helter-skelter. When there's famine in a place, like the case we read of Isaac, he was in a place where there was so much famine. And he, like most of us, also got up to run. He wanted to run away. He wanted to go to Egypt. He wanted to just go anywhere, wherever it is. That is different from where he was to see if things will work. That is the situation that a lot of us, most people, find ourselves in now in the country that we live. No matter the country you are in, whether you are in Nigeria or in the United States, whether you are in Europe or whether you are in Africa, no matter where you find yourself, there are tough times. Economies are finding it difficult to, 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 to move. Changing locations, running from the place where you are, changing business, doing something different. Is it really the solution? Amen. Are you going to Sokoto to look for what is in your Sokoto? When you face your business, when you look at your business, the way it is going, and you're planning to run, praise, praise the Lord. So let's look at, that's what we want to touch now. That no matter where you are, that the blessing on you, the blessing on you overrides the curse on the land. Isaac was in a place of famine. But there was a blessing that God commanded upon his father Abraham. And that same blessing was speaking in his life. And when he wanted to run, God said, don't go anywhere. It's not about the location. It's not about where you're standing. It's about what is inside of you. It's not about the things that happen in your environment. It's about what is inside of you. There is a blessing that you're carrying on your inside that overrides the curse that has caused famine on the land. Don't go anywhere. And the Bible says that and Isaac sowed in that same land. The land he was running away from. The land where there was famine. The land where the Philistines were not able to get anything. They became so jealous that they even were blocking his wells. But the Bible says that he sowed in that same land. In that same land. He didn't go somewhere else. And the Bible made us understand that he had a hundredfold harvest. Hallelujah. So it is not the it's not exactly the fault of the business. It's not the business that you're doing that, that means your success. It's not the land you're in that, that means your success. It is the blessing that is on you. The blessing that is on you that you are able to activate that overrides the curse that is in the land that is stopping other people. The Bible recorded that Isaac grew so big in that same land of famine that the king himself called and said, look, man, you're too much for us. The people every day because he was growing. Hallelujah. And the only difference between Isaac and the rest 
was the blessing that was upon him. Hallelujah. The land was cursed with famine, but blessed Isaac prospered. Look at the case of Abraham and Lot. When Abraham's people and Lot who began to fight, because Lot was working with Abraham, blessed Abraham, as the Bible referred to him. Lot was working with blessed Abraham, and he was prospering. Abraham was prospering. And I think he began to enter the head of his people that their prosperity was from themselves. And they began to fight with Abraham's people. And what happened? Abraham called Lord, say, listen, my son, we can't be fighting. Your people and my people can't be fighting. Let's go our different ways. You look at the land. You choose first. It is not normal for an elder to ask the younger to choose first. But Abraham said, Lord, you choose first. And Lord looked around. And chose the choices, the best looking path, the best path. The places were indeed better. Forget how about how it turned out. The place was indeed better because Lord, oh Lord was not an ignorant fellow. He was a man of the land. He was a farmer. You understand what I'm saying? So when he was choosing, he had enough experience to choose the better place. But the Bible recorded that at the end of the day, it was where Abraham was. God said, look around now. That prospered. Hallelujah. Why? Not because of the skill of Abraham. Not because of any other of the wisdom of Abraham. But there was a blessing that was on Abraham. God commanded a blessing. He said, in blessing, I will bless you. And Abraham prospered while Lot went down. Abraham eventually had to go and rescue Lot. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The blessing on the man will always override the cost of the land. Listen to me. The blessing that is on you today overrides the cost that is on the land where you are operating. Whatever business you are operating, whatever cost that is fighting that business, wherever your ministry is, whatever is struggling with the land there, listen to me. Today, as you activate the blessing of God that is on you, it will override the curse that is on the land. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. understand something Paul made something very very clear to us in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 he said blessed be God who has blessed us not who will bless us not who is planning to bless us but who have blessed us already we are already blessed hallelujah we are already blessed what we need to do is to activate the blessing that is on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear what the Bible says. It says, Wheresoever the sword of your foot will tread, there have I given you. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. There have I given you for your possession. Wheresoever. It didn't say if your foot steps on such so place, or if you step on such, it says, Wheresoever. There is something that is in you that wheresoever you step, it is given to you. Whatsoever business you go into, because you are a blessed person, because you are a partaker of that covenant blessing, you are victorious. It has nothing to do with what the Lord is saying. It has to do with what you are saying. It has to do with what you understand. It has to do with what you know. Do you understand who you are? Do you understand what you're carrying? When you understand what you carry, you begin to speak to the land. Say, come and yield your increase to me. And it will begin to yield the increase. The way you don't understand it, you run around like men, men. You run around like ordinary people. You begin to try to do the things that they are doing. But if you understand what you carry, then you are carrying the covenant of blessed Abraham. You are a seed of Abraham. God has said, God who cannot lie, says, wheresoever the soul of your feet will tear. See, he has sworn by himself that he will not lie to us. He said, whatever you lay hands upon to do shall prosper. He said, you will not labor in vain or bring forth for trouble. Hallelujah. These are guarantees from God. And he didn't tie it to any specific location. He didn't tie it to only where things are good. Famine came in the land of Egypt. Goshen, where the children of Israel dwelt, was safe. Because there was a blessing on them. Hallelujah. So instead of already helping us skelter like others, why not hear the voice of God today and take the land? 
Hear the voice of God today. What is God saying to you? There is something on you that is superior to what is holding others in that land. That land where they say nobody is prospering. There is something in you that is saying to you, you are superior. That job where nobody is being promoted. That business where nobody is excelling. That guy who refuses to promote anybody, sitting on everybody. Your case is different. Hallelujah. Your case, God said to us in the year 2019, that is the year for the anointed. It is the year for the anointed, the blessed of God, to move forward. And that is no matter where you are. God is saying, whatever is happening in that land, has nothing to do with you. If they say the economies are falling, it has nothing to do with you. If they are making projections, it has nothing to do because you operate the economy of heaven. You operate the economy of the blessed. Hallelujah. With your mouth, you speak the things I want you to be. Call them into being. Create the world that you want. Create the atmosphere that you want. Don't speak like... The Bible says when others are saying there is a casting down, you are saying there is a lifting up. In darkness, your light is shining. And shining brighter and brighter. The darker the night, the brighter the light. Bible says that they have people that are sitting in darkness and they have seen a great light. Listen, that light was Jesus, but Jesus has also made us that great light. We are that great light. We are the light of the world. We shine. Light is never afraid of darkness. The light always overrides darkness. In the same manner, the blessing on you overrides the curse on wherever it is you are. Today, begin to excel. However, I will be very, very honest with you. You can't be talking about partaking of this blessedness if you are not born again. If you have not given your life to Christ Jesus, then you, you are not a part of what I'm talking about. But you can do something about it right now if you just pray with me. If you want to be born again, just pray with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God and you came and you died for my sin and you were raised for my justification. I invite you now into my heart and my life as my Lord my savior and my healer i declare with my mouth that i am born again thank you for saving me if you have prayed that prayer i welcome you to the family of god you are born again now you can begin to speak to your land now you can begin to step on that land and know that you're taking it in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for you today as you're listening to me that whatever has been an obstacle whatever has been a hindrance in your business in your health in anything you have laid your hands to do that has been struggling, today as you receive this word into your life, I decree now a release and explosion for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ministry that was struggling, I speak growth now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The business that was struggling, I speak increase now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look, the family that have been there without children, I command the fruit of the womb to begin to answer to you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether they say in this family, nobody gets married. Now I speak to you. Your marriage begins to happen right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for listening. If you are watching me on you on, on Facebook, please share it so that other people will uh, also partake of this message, especially if you are blessed. Even if you think it didn't bless you, it might just be for somebody else. Please still share it. If you are watching me via YouTube, please, please, please press the subscribe button. Press the subscribe button so that anytime there's a message, you will be alerted and know that the thing is there. I thank you for sharing these few minutes with me. I give God praise for the privilege. Thank you. Again, my name remains Chris Murphy. Go to a until I come your way next time. Stay in the loving grip of our Lord Jesus Christ.